Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Well, here I am, December 14th. Took a new, my camera that I'd only just recently bought and a new macro lens out into the bush, which is south of Canberra where I live. So what I'm hoping to do is get some pictures of little stuff, pretty things out here in the, the Magic Wilderness, so cool. Whoa. It gives you a real buzz just to see the tiny little hairs on creatures and their eyes and the way their eyes are made up and just the colours, the little hints of colour that are in there. Stuff you don't see with the human eye normally. I've been there for an hour or so and I approached this uh, big boulder and I saw a yellow leaf and on that leaf was a red and blue thing and as I looked closer it looked like a, a spider. Bent down and Looked on the monitor, and, yeah, it's a good shot, and then kept going looking for other stuff. That's where it all started. Went home and some of the better images, including the one of the red and blue spider, I put on Flickr, which is a, a photo sharing website. They started coming fairly readily. Great spider, so colorful. This is an amazing jumping spider. The colors are brilliant. Then, probably an unnamed species of Muratus, new to science. Had no idea, had never even heard of Muratus. And to that I replied, wow, new to science find that hard to believe, considering how many scientists live nearby in my hometown of Canberra. past, I've discovered about 200 species of these tiny little mites that live in sediment on the ocean floor and nobody actually had seen it before. So there's heaps of work discovering new animals and uh, describing them and naming them. One day, looked around and discovered this little photograph of, of something I had never seen before, something blue, and I love blue. I'm partially colorblind and blue is the color that is, just stands out for me. I thought, what is this? Where, where was it? Where is this animal? Where can I find it? So I tried finding out who is the photographer? Who took the picture? Here we are, pick, picking up fucking litter. It's a good job, good exercise. Just walk along, in amongst all that crap and litter, have it open in your mind that you might find something valuable. And yeah, nearly every day you'd find something. If it wasn't money, it'd be. Something really weird, I mean, I found a sex toy once. You're always finding hypodermic needles. And um, I found a, a suitcase once full of someone's law degree and had six ties in it and six pairs of shoes, just weird shit. Eventually, I um, got hold of Stuart, Stuart Harris. I had no idea who that person was. So all I knew was his Flickr site. There were bird pictures, there were pictures of women in uh, bikinis and half nude. I told Stuart this was a new discovery. I don't think he had an idea that he'd found anything scientifically interesting. You cannot just simply post a picture on the internet and say, this is a new species and that's, that's what I'm calling it. We had to find another animal. It can't be that hard. I'll just go back to the same place and look for that yellow leaf and maybe the spot will be hanging out there. Couldn't drive out there fast enough, really. Oh no, here we go. Go and find it, go and find a new species. Yeah. 
in a car park. Ah. Go away. Spent a good couple of hours at that spot and wasn't there. I remember years and years ago, someone mentioned a movie called Blue Velvet. This would have been oh, late 80s, I suppose. Done by an American director called David Lynch. Many years later, I've now watched it, I reckon, 100 times. Mystery and the allure of mystery has always been um, part of my life in the last 20 years. If you scratch the surface a little bit and have a look inside, it, it can be a bit dark and it's not as it seems. I asked you about the location and luckily you had no problems with giving it to me. When looking for pico spiders, best timing is usually early in the mornings and it's not easy coming from Sydney. Burumba Rocks is about a four hour drive away. 3 a.m. in the morning I left and started searching. My color blindness gives me one advantage. I'm able to spot things that are camouflaged. So I'm not getting blinded by color, basically. I've got quite good at not finding them. Kept walking up and down the track and uh, had to return empty-handed to Sydney. I found this very strange that somebody could just walk up a track one day, find this little blue thing sitting on a leaf taking a photograph, and then it's vanished. It didn't make any sense to me. My father told me as a three-year-old, there was often big huntsmen crawling over, over me in the cot. I was always scared of spiders. <laughs> I still am. <laughs> One of those idyllic suburban upbringings here in, in Canberra, in Belconnen. You know, school was good, parents were good, had the backyard to play in. It was all lovely. Things changed in 1974. My mother passed away when I was nine years, nine years of age. Everything was sort of shaken up then. And I know my father struggled. You know, I was never the same after that. And I ended up leaving school in year nine, about halfway through the year. To get some quick cash, one night we stole a blind dog uh, collection box from the local shops, a Labrador thing. And we ran down the local oval at, at night with this thing to knock its head off and get the money out. And my first bit of media exposure was the headlines, Youth Remanded. My dear grandmother came down from Sydney, my father's mother, to look after us. Nan, as I call her, it was effectively my mother closest female I had in my life. Nan would ask every now and then, you know, whatever relationship I was in, you know, uh, are you going to get married? And, you know, it'd be nice to have a, 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 you know, a grandchild through you and things like that. So what can you do? I remember I was growing up as a boy in Germany and just watched these spiders walking around on the walls and was just fascinated by these little jumping spiders. 
Once I find something interesting, I just don't, don't let it go. I often compare them with the kittens with too many legs or with little puppies. I wish sometime this love for peacock spiders and jumping spiders in general will just rub off onto the other spiders and everybody will just love them. At the time, probably Stuart was also looking for this spider, but I had no way of knowing because we lost contact somehow. Stuart changed email addresses and the one that I had didn't work. Spend all day looking for the fucker. Yeah, as a matter of scale, you know, you're looking for a spider that's four to five millimetres long in a park that's hundreds of square kilometres, thousands of square kilometres big. A very small needle in a very big haystack. I suppose up to that point in time, I never really felt I'd achieved anything. I never rose to any great heights in anything I'd done. So I really felt like this is a an opportunity, an inherent opportunity to um, prove I was worthy of something. You want to find something that no one else has found, you know, lay claim to it, I suppose. And, I mean, even though science does discover new things, but it's usually at the bottom of some five kilometre deep trench, but just in your sort of relative backyard, like around Canberra, finding something unknown to science there is, uh, that's pretty cool. There's a new word now, citizen scientist, and uh, I think Stuart classifies as such. Certainly he likes to be called citizen scientist. I think in the old days, people just called people like it amateurs, but uh, citizen scientist has become quite a popular expression. There's certain limitations to this. A citizen scientist may not have the same background education as one who's done a PhD and a postdoc. The fact is, I took that photo in 2008. It's there. It can't be the only one in existence. There has to be more than one. So logic told me, and I don't always work on pure logic, but logic told me in this case, it has to be there. Therefore, I need to keep going back, and I'll keep going back until I find the bloody thing. I'm involved in a mystery. I'm in the middle of a mystery. You like mysteries that much? He finds an ear in a paddock and takes it as a good citizen trip down to the detective, and he's told, you know, what are you doing going down this tangent? You know, you're just a local lad that works in a hardware store. You shouldn't be doing this sort of stuff. And so he's basically told, don't look any further. But he does. Well, so we're nearly at the rocks now, so. My mates, it's so hard to get them to come out for anything these days, now that we're a bit older, and to get them all out here today was just wonderful. Wait a minute, look at this. Well, with the four of us looking, that we had a good chance. Another one of Stu's crazy sort of adventures. Been involved in a few with him before. They can even hide and stuff like this. I was trying to give some sort of tuition, but my technique wasn't successful either. So You're the expert. it was a pretty random sort of search. Yeah. Bullets went through my head thinking, well, I better find it because you now what if Alex finds it? Like he'll probably want it named after him. Bloody scientists, if they saw us out here, they, they certainly wouldn't classify it as a scientific exploration. It was, it was a bit of fun. A bit over it after that 18k walk with no result. Stuart continued on the hunt. when I took that photo and once I told her I found a spider and was looking for it she'd always say have you found your spider Stuart have you found your spider yet seven years ago there was those terrible camera fires which obliterated you can still see it and you just think I wonder if that was a somehow that 
spider in its colony escaped the fire and and it was the last one. I could look forever and never find it. Really. So it does your mind in a bit. Could the fire have destroyed basically the whole population? This animal might be rare or at the edge of an extinction. Days and weeks and months of searching went by, years even, and um, I still wasn't finding it. What do I know? What don't I know? Um, help. <laughs> Can I just read you this? Hi Stuart, uh, I just had a look at your website again and found a comment you added 28 hours ago. Something about losing data and wanting to get in touch with a spider expert, which I assume is me. I am prepared to give it one last try. Cheers, Jürgen. Jürgen, how are you? Nice to Finally, meet you. Finally, get yeah. to meet you. I saw him the first time at Bruma Rocks. I was quite impressed by his uh, physical nature. We're the same age. Only a couple of months difference. I feel inferior academically to these these people. Uh, I never stuck out anything like that. The combination of his local knowledge See, and my like intuition like about Adam where these spiders Adam might be yeah. was making us very optimistic so, that we would find it. To be honest, I'd rather find it closer to the car park. Than... I had a lot of interesting conversations about his past. He had lots of different jobs and uh, very different from mine. What, being a scientist, you enjoy it or? Sorry? You enjoy being a scientist? Or um, actually, I asked him, why are you photographing spiders and women? And he just said he's looking for beauty in everywhere. And I think, uh, yeah, hey, this is, this is an interesting man. Birds and birds. <laughs> so I've done a little bit of research on jumping spiders. I couldn't see much on peacock spiders, though. So many species are there now. I had lots of questions about science, about these spiders, and I was really intrigued by this. Why was he so interested in them? I thought he was just interested in photographing. No, he wanted to go further. I, I've never learned so much in one day about something I didn't know anything about. Peacock spiders, like a peacock, the bird, have a very ornate and brilliant display where they have a flap of skin that they open up. When they're in the normal sort of passive stage, it's all neatly folded up like a handkerchief, really. I'm wondering if this was indeed a peacock spider and if it did have a display, what would it look like? Oh dear. The word thorough really doesn't do it justice. I mean, we weren't going far off the track, but uh, no blue and red peacock spider. It got a bit uh, disheartening, the whole search. I could tell that Jürgen was probably thinking that he was never going to be found. I just put this into the too hard basket. We, we kept in touch, but I might ask a, a question with a lot of enthusiasm and the answer will be very matter of fact. No, yes, Stuart, no, Stuart. Part of me, the big softy within me, sometimes wished he could be a bit more, I don't know, warm. Would he be a friend of mine if it wasn't for peacock spiders? I don't know, probably not. I mean, I don't walk in a circle of scientists. He's not as woof, woofy as I am. Oh, Alex, come on! You know we we're getting a real buzz from the um, from from the search. Come on, mate. Oh, actually, anyway, we got up around this massive boulder, and um, nature called. So I wanted to go way off the track. So I dug my hole, did my business, and then headed back to the track. And then I was approaching a very flat, large granite rock. I looked over at the rock, and on top of a twig, I saw a jump. 
Fuck, fuck, Alex, Alex, bring the bag. I haven't got it, I need the container, I haven't got a container there. Quick hand, I'm going to take a photo first. Blurry. Container, container. Just on the stick there. Get away. Jammed it, and I like that. And that was, um, that was it. Look at that. Look at the red and the blue, same as in the photo. And here it is three years later. And so it was in the container. Of course, I had a little look, and, and there it was, you know, sitting in this container, this little spider sitting there with its petty pouch, looking at me, going, who the fuck are you? Finally, we got reception on our phone, so I pulled over. Hello, hello. Hi, Stuart. Guess what, Jürgen? He goes, oh, what? You didn't find it, did you? And I said, sure, sure as hell did, mate. <laughs> I never thought you would find it. He said, I'll come down tomorrow. All right, there you go, Jürgen. That's the one. This is it. You know, it's taken me years to find this one. Uh, hopefully, it survived the journey. I'll see you, mate. All the best. See ya. The trick is with these spiders, to get them to display, you have to present them with a female. Without a female, they just don't show their colors. There's always the risk, though, that a female of a different species will see the male as prey. I've seen that happen quite a number of times, that males were gobbled up by females and there was nothing I could do much. So I placed Stuart's male onto the scene introduced a female of a different species to it, and then watched. I remember a number of times I felt, maybe I should stop, should stop this female. I kept photographing and filming and all of a sudden, he was gone. He must have jumped off the desk, or maybe I've squashed it. So really, my heart stopped still. How could I lose an animal that was so important for us? Just one careless step, and that would have been it. But they really, she just seems fluffier. It seems much better than when they did the last time. I think a different person must have done it. Why it took three days for him to take photos is because for most of that time, he didn't know where it was. And uh, luckily, he found it and recorded it. That was very, very lucky. Finally, he just folded out his flaps, put his legs up into the air, and uh, it's the first moment that I really saw what the spider looks like. Here we go. Fuck me dead. Check it out. Blown away, totally mesmerized. Um, it was more than I could imagine. Could have been just as I saw it on that yellow leaf. It was like a picture, it looked like a monkey's face. It's just phenomenal. It's so bright, it's so colorful, it's so unspider like. It's, it's quite majestic. Doing a reverse lynch would be not starting with a pristine 
purity on the outside and looking at the darkness inside as to starting with the darkness on the outside and yet when you scratch the surface you know something more beautiful something more true real honest um, is, is revealed Jürgen sent me the scientific paper. Eight known species of peacock spider in Australia, plus one new species. And there it was, the next line down was, uh, and this species was Maratus harrisi. I just wanted to tell Nan, you know. It was a case of Nan, Nan, you know. Are you listening? Yes, yes. Nan, you know that spider I've been looking for? Yes, well, it's now official. It's been named after me, and therefore it's taken your name. I think she knew that, um, uh, that I'd achieved something anyway. And, and I hadn't been able to present her with a, a grandchild or anything like that. I gave her a hairy little blue and red spider instead. It might be in the interest of a professional scientist to maintain that distinction between citizen scientists and real scientists, but you have to wonder whether there is such a big distinction really there. It became a new world for Stuart. Now he was able to show this spider to other people, not only an, a new animal, but one that he discovered and he photographed. He put it on the map and people all of a sudden paid attention to Stuart Harris. And this is Nico indicator for the relationship between biodiversity and prescribed burning. And that's a great, great thing to work on. Even when I played football when I was young, I never had a coach take me under his wing and say, Stuart, I can see your potential, I want to help you. Whereas Jürgen seemed to be doing that. He wrote a little a qualifying thing. statement yeah. talking about Harris and, and the journey that there was to find it. And he, he said some very generous words about how, how determined I was and how, how committed I was to finding it and that without my, those qualities, this would have never been discovered. And those words to me were like sound from my heart. I felt a true um, appreciation for my efforts. Oh, that's another one with the, I call it the cricket stumps. It's got three black <laughs> stripes on its back. It does, yes. That's gorgeous. method they gave us, like I wouldn't have chosen this method, but that's science for you. You've got to work within the parameters. Well, I think you'd agree with me that there is a morphology between the different species which seems very consistent. 